Hey there friends, Dave Pilatus, Canine Missing Project, copyrighted edition for our video channel. And here is the executive producer, Hawk. Oh, you good girl. She just sleeping it off today. Yes, you good girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, she says, leave me alone, Dad. I want to go back to sleep. And I don't blame her. All right. So we're going to go back. Start this up. Thanks for being here. This is a copyrighted edition for my video channel, and it's about missing people. Um, one of the things about doing people research is behavior. It's not only behavior, but it's location. And what I mean by that if you notice when I can in the state series books I've also included a large map a driving map of the state with locations placed on it where the people disappear and some people may not understand why I do that especially people new to the topic but you old timers who have been around you get it and what I'm going to talk to you about today is one of those things that came about because of the maps. When you do a big U.S. map, you can't get down into the fine details like you can on a state map and see how close these disappearances are together. And a lot of, a lot of maps I have right now that I've never made public just because I haven't gotten around to writing a book about the state but as an example, Colorado is a state I've been following since I lived there. And it's always intrigued me because we have the Plains, which has people missing. And then we have uh, the 14ers, the 14,000 foot peaks. Now the first story, actually the first four stories tonight, deal with Colorado. And they deal with disappearances at some of the higher elevations. Now, to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense because anything above timberline in Colorado, which is usually about 10,000 feet, there's nothing up there, folks. I mean, there's nothing up there. Rocks, boulders, not a lot to hide under, etc. And I've been up on a few of those mountains, quite a few, and... I, I, my mind wanders about what could happen up here to these people because I don't get it. Now, over the last year, I've talked about three of these cases. And there's a fourth case in this one area. In the last year in Colorado, there's been a couple disappearances in Rocky Mountain National Park. But then there's been a whole lot of disappearances in an area north of Durango. If you've never been to Durango, you, you need to go. And you need to explore the area around there. Because there's a lot of people that live in Durango for one reason. They love the outdoors. Great hunting, great fishing, great sightseeing. It gets a little hot there in the summer. But this time of the year, it starts cooling off. And the fall is just utterly gorgeous. Uh, the aspen trees start to turn color, and it's breathtaking. On it. I'm just trying to be honest with you. So let me lay the groundwork for this area, first of all. About a year ago, I told you the story about a, a man named David Lund. It's David. 29 years old. He went missing October 1st, 2022. He was an employee of a large ranch and he made his home in Durango. And he told friends at the ranch that he was going to take off that early morning on October 1st and go to the Madden Peak Trailhead and run. Now, David was a member of the Durango Running Club in absolutely phenomenal shape. People at the ranch said that David 
was one of the best employees you could imagine. Great person, super smart. Now maybe you wouldn't think about that as a ranch hand, being super smart. But David was one of those guys that just found his happy place being in the outdoors, working with nature, working around cattle, having the ground on your feet every day. It's kind of what David was like. When he disappeared, it was a huge hit to that community. Thousands of, thousands of people were upset, wrote notes to me about his disappearance. Hundreds of people went into the mountains and searched the Madden Peak area. La Plata County poured tons of resources into finding him. It's been over a year. David's never been found. And I did a lengthy segment on David. It's on this channel. You can find it. And I encourage you to watch it. It's a compelling story of a really, really good guy. Now, just prior to David disappearing, a case got by me. But I went back because David's case piqued my interest on that area. And I found the case of David Lamthatch, 23 years old. Another really good soul from Salt Lake City. David was also a mountain runner. Isn't that strange? He went missing July 17, 2022, about three months before David Lund disappeared. And yes, I, it, it's not past me that both their first names were David. That's pretty weird. Well, Mr. Lamthatch was volunteering for the Hard Rock 100 road race, running race. He drove up from Salt Lake, and he was last seen in an area near Molas Lake. Race was over. They thought he was just going to come in, but he decided to do a short run. Now, the strange thing about Dave, well, it's a strange case, yeah, no, nonetheless. But they found David's cell phone on the trail. You, me, and everybody else, including David, we really protect our, our cell phones. Of course. It's kind of like the lifeline to all of our photos, contacts. So to think somebody just drops it on the trail, you don't really see that very often. Now, there was no animal predation. But how did that phone get out of his pack, and get onto the ground? Well, La Plata County, again, went in there with a huge search effort, multiple, multiple days. They found nothing. Other searchers went back, found nothing. It's been <clears throat> 14 months. Thousands of people have been over that same area near Molas Lake. David's never been found. His backpack that he was carrying was never found. So what happened to David Lamthatch? His family members in Salt Lake made a big appeal to the people of Durango. They did respond. Many people went into the woods, looked, nothing. So that's two cases within three months in 2022. Trust me, it was on my radar. This year, June 24th, 2023, I did a lengthy segment about this case. Ian O'Brien, 28 years, was going to run. He was a long distance runner, a triathlete. He was going to run Hesperus Mountain. Very, very close proximity to where David Lund disappeared, within a couple miles. He went missing July, June 24th, 2023. Now, <clears throat> a couple things about Ian. He swam like a fish. He was a big athlete. Everyone loved him. He had a wild kind of personality. I don't mean dangerous. I mean fun-loving. He had tons of friends. He disappeared. Again, La Plata County goes in there, <clears throat> does a huge search, Huge, and I'm talking mega, finds nothing. 
Now, at this point, I was kind of thinking, why isn't somebody putting these pieces together? Three people missing, nobody found. The distance from David Lamthatch to Ian and David Lund, about 25 air miles between the two. Not that far. So on a map, let me show you. This is Durango, Colorado right here. If you just go this direction a little bit, Lund was right here. O'Brien was right here when they disappeared. In the outer stretches of the middle of nowhere, on the East Mancos River, on September 2nd of this year, just a month and a half ago, some fishermen are, were on a very remote section of the East Mancos River. They see an unusual sight. See a body. They get closer, and it's a human. So they pull the body out of the river, they hike out and they contact the La Plata Sheriff. La Plata comes out, they bring some horses, and they bring the body out. Goes for identification, it's Ian O'Brien. Coroner does an autopsy, he died of drowning. If you don't find that unusual, you shouldn't be here. If you're finding that it matches the 411 profile, stay here. This is a dead ringer for the cases we talk about. How many times has an in-shape athlete disappeared and later found in water? How many times? I wrote a whole book about it. This book right here, Missing 411, the, uh, the uh, Missing 411, A Sobering Coincidence. Find that on our website, nabigfootsearch.com, like North America, nabigfootsearch.com. Go to the online store. All of our books are $24.99. You can get DVDs, hats, posters. I'll sign the poster for you. And more. So, in September, when I read that Ian was found in water, drowned. You see, I already knew that Ian was a great swimmer. Sometimes I don't know that about cases, but he, I knew that. So what happened here? Yeah, I'm suspicious. I'm very suspicious. When three people go missing in a 25 mile radius in a state where there's essentially nobody else missing anywhere else but this one little area. And then, and then, this case happened. So, September 3rd, this year, a day after Ian's body is found in the East Mancos River, a man named James Shadid this is just one day after. Coincidental? Yeah, I'd say so. James Shadid, 79 years old. He's west of Purgatory Ski Resort, just north of Durango. Right in the area between Lamb Thatch and Lund. Right in the middle of where they disappeared. He goes out. Now, his home is in Durango. His wife, Marilyn, and him have been married for 56 years. Wow, what a relationship. He met his wife in high school. He's a retired dentist. And he sold his dental business in Wichita in 2000. Marilyn said that he loved skiing, fishing, hunting, and hiking. That's why they moved to Durango. They loved the outdoors. Then they moved there in 2001. Family described him as strong, athletic, and very, very sharp. Well, James was born and raised in Wichita. His dad came here from Lebanon in the 1930s. 
And when Jim grew up, after he met Marilyn, he decided he wanted to go to dental school, graduated, and he volunteered in the war. He was sent to Seoul, Korea, into their DMZ zone as a dentist. After he got out, he moved his family back to Denver for a short period of time and then back to Wichita. They have a son named Scott who went on almost every escapade that his dad went on. And the family did almost everything together in the outdoors. This is the DMV photo that they released on Jim. 79 years old, in exceptionally good shape. Do you remember a couple days ago, just a couple days ago, I told you about a case out of Wyoming where a 76 year old man disappeared who was a retired dentist and he was never found. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. But the proximity in time and space is pretty close, folks. Just saying. Just saying. So, the La Plata County Sheriff's put out this wanted poster, missing persons poster on Jim. A good picture of him catching a nice fish. Now, Jim and Marilyn were about as close as two people could ever get. I went missing, I'll explain the circumstances in a second. This is Purgatory Ski Resort north of Durango. And he disappeared west of Purgatory. Marilyn stated that that was a resort that he literally loved to ski. I believe it. So on September 3rd, the Shadids decided that they were going to go out and they were going to scout for elk for the upcoming season. It was muzzle loading elk was the first one, first part of the season. So they drove their truck out, parked it near the ski resort, and they decided that they would hike out for 90 minutes. They went out, looked around, scouted for elk, came back. And they were about 20 minutes from the truck when Jim said, hey, there's only one more place I want to check. I just want to walk over this room and I'll be right back. He says, why don't you just go back to the truck? I'll meet you there. Point of separation. Remember that. So they separate. She goes back to the truck. 20 minutes later, he's not there. He calls her and he says, hey, I'll be right back. I'm only about 20 minutes out. He, and he had a radio. So he radios her and tells her, 20 more minutes go by, he's not there. 45 minutes go by, he's not there. Hour and a half go by, he's not there. Marilyn's deciding, what am I going to do? Eventually, she calls the little plot of sheriff. So he had a radio. He could communicate, which is important. And they planned in case they got separated for this exact instance. They could communicate with each other. Great plan, smart. Many hunters don't think this way. So Marilyn contacts the sheriff, explains the situation about Jim, and two deputies respond out. They understand that he's in good shape, no major medical issues, he doesn't have a backpack, but he had a radio. And now he's not answering the radio. Things are getting serious. So Plata Sheriff got there late in the afternoon. Too late to start the formal search, but they did a cursory of the area. Late that afternoon and evening, they start calling for reinforcements from other counties. The Plata got three different dog teams there on September 4th. That's a lot. Congratulations. 
and they were they asked for a piece of his clothing to put on the set which they got and three different teams at three different times were taken to the area where Marilyn last saw him guaranteed a place he had last been and they started to search almost immediately the canines couldn't they searched initially for a short distance and then they lost the scent La Plata County came out with 25 searchers which is a pretty good response for a remote area like that the next day they got volunteers from Archuleta San Juan and Montezuma counties and they also got a lifeline helicopter to fly over the area. This is important. Lifeline can cover a lot of area compared to ground pounders. Now I'm one of these people who believes in using equestrians too. Equestrians, people on horses. Why? Because you're sitting up and you're looking down. And from that perch, you can see a lot more area than you can pounding the ground on feet. And you don't get tired like ground pounders do. Horse can go for 20 miles in a day easy. You can't. So eventually, they got up to 100 volunteers over a 10-day stretch looking for Jim. Marilyn was just completely distraught. They weren't finding her husband. They weren't finding anything. They also got upwards of 30 hunters from the upper Durango area to cover the area like they were hunting and look for Jim. They found nothing. September 14th, the La Plata Sheriff held a press conference and he stated that the status on this search was going to change. It was going to change from a search to a recovery, a part-time recovery, meaning that they believed that Jim was dead and they were looking for a body. And what they would do is on a part-time basis, as search and rescue people recovered, they would go out on their own and look, which really means that probably not much is going to happen. As I've stated before, search and rescue is done by people just like you and me. Have jobs, etc. They do it voluntarily on their own time. They aren't paid. They have to pay for their own food, everything. And they get tired. Imagine being on the trail, humping it for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days. Yeah, you get real tired. And then the sheriff has to think about what happens if there's another case? These, these searchers are exhausted. I've got to keep some in reserve, right? Well, no scent trail, nothing found. He had a two-way radio in a cluster zone. He's an intellectual and he's an elk hunter. Friends? This one bothers me. The whole situation bothers me up there. Let me lay this out for you real clear. Here's a map of the whole area and the disappearances. Let's start down south in Durango. So this is Durango, Colorado. It's about 25 miles from where Lund disappeared to where Lamb Thatch disappeared. Okay? From here to here, about four or five miles. And this area right here is a famous running spot high up in the mountains. Now, Brian, he disappeared right here, and he's found his body's found in a deep canyon in a super remote area. How it got there is a million dollar question, and nobody knows. Lunn was just almost on the other side of these peaks, running around on mountain trails, and he disappears. So you drive up Highway 550 a bit, this is where James Shadid disappeared at Purgatory Ski Resort, just, just west of Purgatory, west. Now, Jim, or Dave Lamthatch, disappears on Molass Lake, further up 550, where they were doing another long-distance run. 
he's volunteering, comes out, disappears. That's kind of the million dollar overlook. Here's some characteristics about the runners I want you to remember. All three were under 30. All distance runners. All four were alone. Lund and O'Brien took off and were on their own from the very beginning. Lamb Thatch was part of that running support group, so he had people around him a majority of the time. But when the race was over and everybody's going in, point of separation, he's on his own. And then, on the Jim Shadid disappearance, to me it's classic case, point of separation. If you haven't read my books, I say repeatedly, that it almost is as though something or someone is watching that couple, whoever it is, two hunters, two fishermen, and then one decides to go in and now one's alone. And when that one is alone, something happens. Now, what, what can happen? I don't know. But the puzzling part to me is that the majority of these times, the people are never found. Now, on O'Brien's case, he left alone. He disappeared when he was alone. And his body is found in an area that is extremely remote on a river that wasn't flowing that hard in September, the East Bancos. They would never said what clothing was found on him, what shoes were found on him, could have been key points to me, or the condition of the body. If you go back to Missing 411 The Hunted, I'm, not, I'm sorry, Missing 411 The UFO Connection, and we think about Carl's case, where he's dumped on the side of a mountain. I always think, well, what if he was dumped on the side of a mountain and rolled into a river? What if he was dumped on the side of a mountain, hit his head on a rock, was unconscious, went into the river? He died by drowning. And he'd be in the river. Now Carl reported, or actually he said to me when, it, when I interviewed him, he said, Dave, I woke up falling. There was a time where I was in the craft and then the next thing I remember, I was falling through the air and my shoulder hits the ground and I'm rolling downhill. He said it was pretty scary because he didn't know where he was, what he was falling from, or where he was rolling to. And he said when he woke up, he didn't recognize where he was. Now, if that was a lot of the people that were missing, and they didn't know where they were, that could account for a lot of people who maybe never found. Now, a lot of people since Carl's case have contacted me and said, Dave, what stopped them from dumping you in the middle of the ocean? Well, oh, yeah, I've said this all along. I've said that it's almost as though they're gonna be grateful and they're gonna allow you to be found for whatever reason. But what about all the rest of these people who are never found? Are they the ones who fought, got angry, irritated these individuals, entities? And then they retaliated in some way? Or as in Carl's case, were these people kept? I have no idea. I'm sure this is only one part of a big, big puzzle that we know we all don't understand fully. But I have great, great compassion for Marilyn. The loneliness that is in her life after losing 
her husband of 56 years would be unbelievable. She's walking around a house without her husband, her life partner. I hope and pray that that son Scott is with her because I know she needs her. So my prayers go out to Scott and Marilyn. I don't know what happened to your dad and your husband, but as I've just said, something unusual is going on in that area in the last year and three or four months. And the proof is in that map. Please share this video. It's worth sharing. And I'll try to put up some links of these other cases because I think they're worthy. And um, under the comments section on the, you're looking at the screen on the left side, it, it'll say comments. If you look down there, my comment will be the first one. And I'll try to put the videos up that I did of these other three guys. Very sad. Thanks for being here. Polite us out.